Welcome to the What's New in Autodesk Fusion 360 Manufacturing. It's release time again, and we're excited to highlight what you can expect to see in this July 2022 release. This release brings a mix, with 150 quality of life updates, a few new features, and the release from preview of tool axis controls to additional three axis milling strategies. It's definitely worth knowing that quality of life changes are driven by the feedback from you, the user. You've spoken about your experience when using Fusion 360, and we've listened with updates being made throughout the manufacturing workspace to better enhance your user experience. With far too many to list, let's have a quick look at some of the headliners you can expect to see. The creation of patterns in the manufacturing workspace is now more similar to how they are created in design, giving a more consistent experience across the workspaces. Creating expressions can be very difficult without knowing the correct parameter names. This is made much easier as you now have the ability to search in the expression UI. Machine time option has been added to the right-click menu of NC programs and the ribbon for additional access. The algorithm has also been enhanced to increase the accuracy of machine times. Toolpath warnings can now be hidden from view cleaning up the browser tree with a checkbox in the warning dialog. The opportunity to create duplicate tools in a document has been eliminated as if you select a tool from your library that is already in a document, it will now not be added, reducing downstream programming issues. When using the Toolpath data dialog, unselected segments can now be hidden from view. This can be incredibly useful when trying to view areas of toolpath such as in roughing, where you may want to interrogate one level of the toolpath. Struggling to safely remove the tool from a tight area or an undercut? This can easily now be resolved with the option to select the point at which the tool exits the cut. Previously, measurements were referenced from the model origin, which may not be the same as your machine coordinates. You now have the option to select the active setup work coordinates allowing for the creation of measurements from the actual machine. Steep and shallow toolpath features have been made more discoverable and easier to use with the option to select only steep or only shallow areas with the use of a drop-down menu, removing the need to understand the secrets of the threshold angle. When using the blend toolpath, you have the option to determine the direction of the passes, but this can be a bit difficult to use as it's unclear what direction one way or the other way is, causing you to flip a coin and hope that you're correct. A graphical arrow has now been added, showing the direction you are choosing. The option to preserve the order has been added to the 2D chamfer toolpath, giving you greater control of the machining sequence, as chamfers will be machined in the order that you select them. Threading tool versatility has been increased, allowing its use in turning chamfer operations. When programming turning toolpaths, the spun profile and rest material information can be useful, but it can clutter up the workspace. These can now be turned off from view and be shown only when you need them. When simulating toolpaths, the stock turning direction can now be shown with graphical arrows. By checking on the new show spindle direction, which can be found in the view section of the simulation dialog. Packing details have been added to the nest info panel and compare dialog, allowing the user to identify the material to be used. We've also made several improvements to the range tool, including displaying the envelope boundaries when selecting the arrange item in the timeline. This allows you to quickly and easily see more information without the need to open the dialog. Alongside this, we have dynamic highlighting on feature selection. We're now preserving the last few settings to improve productivity. And lastly, holes and cutouts in your envelopes are now not shaded, giving an improved look and feel. Manual inspection now allows for measuring between holes with numerous additional UX improvements. Probing and probe geometry now use the same font giving a consistent look and feel to the experience. The workflow when positioning parts in an additive setup has been enhanced, with many commands automatically selecting the component when only one is available. Yellow part shading, which previously warned that the component was close to an edge, has been removed to reduce setup confusion. Simulation now has a new environment with its own ribbon, dedicated to simulation tasks creating a smoother workflow and paving the way for future features. Along with that, you can now section view your part when simulating to get a clearer view of the machining process. This is especially useful when machining internal features where the view can be blocked by geometry. Machine simulation has also had 16 additional Herco machine tools added, along with improvements being made to the previous 11 in the library. Last, but definitely not least, multi-axis controls for 3D toolpaths has now moved from preview to be fully released as part of the machining extension. This gives most 3D toolpaths the ability to quickly be converted to 5-axis. Tool axis definitions can be easily defined using a simple point or curve geometry, 
with automatic collision avoidance giving you the confidence that your toolpaths are safe. This increased functionality gives you greater toolpath flexibility to take on more complex and valuable work. For a deeper dive into this functionality, make sure to check out the tutorial by following the link in the description. Thanks for watching this update, and don't forget to check out the blog post to learn about what else is new in Autodesk Fusion 360.